Okie doke. This is what our menu looks like, by the way, everybody. Uh, normally I don't show this stuff, but... Thought, you know, why not? Um, this is that overview that I mentioned. I believe this is the image of Montreal. Uh, which is a, a city I've never been to, but I would really like to. It's It seems like kind of an amazing place. I know a few people who either live there now or have lived there in the past. And uh, seems like kind of an amazing place. Um, that said, uh, w way too big. Way too big to be Raccoon City. Uh, Raccoon City has said last episode, last video, only supposed to be like 100,000 people. Um, but it, in reality, uh, Montreal, as, as visualized here, is like urban area of like over a million. And I think the metro is like four, something like that. Um, what do we have as extra modes, by the way? Okay. Right, right, right. Okay. Good to know. Bonuses. Ghost survivors. Gods of dirt. Are these the... Are these the ghosts? Yeah, these are the ghost survivors. Okay. Uh, we'll, we'll probably do this later. I should also check out my, my costumes. No. Leon. Don't want either of those. I could also unlock everything using... Um, there's a cheat. It's on sale right now. Uh, man. It's a rough costume. It's like she's wearing Leon's clothes, which is weird. Uh, I, I want to mention this costume, by the way. For those who don't know the history, I, I'm not super expert on it. We'll, we'll talk about it during the game at some point, maybe. But... Um, Resident Evil 2, the original one from the 90s, actually had kind of a troubled production cycle. And there's this um, alternate build of the game that was originally, rather than having Claire, was going to be this woman, Elsa Walker, who maybe canonically... I, I don't know if she actually was a motorcycle racer, but like the fact that she rode, the, rode a motorcycle and was wearing like a full-body uh, leather motorcycle outfit in the game was like one of her key design traits. Um, in this early build of a, a scrapped version of Resident Evil 2 before Claire got introduced. Uh, so this is actually a throwback to that version. Uh, okay, well, we've delayed it long enough. I'm, I'm actually recording kind of late at night, which I, I generally shouldn't do, because I know that I'm not playing as well, and uh, I'm not speaking as well either. But I, I really had a lot of fun with this yesterday. The The first session was super enjoyable to me, so uh, I kind of wanted to get back into it. Uh, hmm. I may put this away as well. I don't think we'll need it. Um, yeah, the, the first session was like super, super fun. Um, and I, I'm not going to be as articulate or as uh, effective in the game as a result of... Uh, playing this at a time it's sort of late for me but I want to this is not how I imagined the first day hmm. yeah so Leon being brand new to the force is kind of a uh, funny thing uh, I might run that back to the item box too that texture is not good strange normally this game has a really good one so far. Thank you. Uh, you know what? I will keep the herb just in case. In honor of those who have served, Raccoon City. Uh, officially, Leon was told to stay away. And I don't know if that's ever really elaborated on in the game. Um, in this in, in this remake, at least. Presumably, I, I would guess that, like, things were starting to go downhill or something, and they just told him, like, hey, you're a rookie, like, we can't train you right now. We're, we're like, dealing with a crisis or something. So he was told to, like, 
stay away. But in the original game, they they. Okay, gore warning. By the way, this is uh, a famous gore shot in this game. Pretty gross. Very cool. Very impressively rendered. The whole missing jaw thing is also kind of like a classic horror movie staple. If I bump into him, I think he drops. Yeah. Head split open. Um, yeah, it's kind of a horror movie staple to have zombies with a missing lower jaw. Uh, most, most famously, the zombie who is overlaid with the, the actual title screen for Day of the Dead is, is missing his jaw in the, the 1985 uh, Romero film. But yeah, in, in the original... In the original version of the game, they actually had an explanation as to why he was late, and it was, it was actually an accident, like he wasn't told to stay away. But rather... Um, he, he was actually canonically hungover. Uh, like, he, he had been drinking the previous night so heavily that uh, he ended up he ended up late. I, I, I actually kind of like that explanation. Um, I'll, I'll get to that in a moment. Record of events. September 25th. We're turning the station into a temporary shelter due to the massive sudden outbreak. All police personnel have been instructed to make the safety of the citizens their top priority as we try to accommodate as many of them as possible. September 25th. Addendum. One of the refugees attacked us in the middle of the night, resulting in the death of one officer and injuring three others. The person in question was quickly restrained. We believe this was simply a case of someone snapping under intense stress. September 26th. A mob attacked the station today, resulting in a number of casualties. A few survivors were able to make it uh, safely behind the emergency shutters, but surrounded as we are, it'll be hard for us, for any of us, to escape this place. We're not sure we can fix any of our comm equipment, so we remain cut off from the outside world. Which actually explains why they wouldn't be able to tell Leon to stay away altogether, um, and why they wouldn't be able to call out for help. September 27th. There was another clash on the west side of the station around 1 p.m. Twelve people died. There was only a handful of survivors left. Everything is falling into disarray here. David Ford. Um, I, I always kind of liked this canon explanation of um leon being hung over uh it's it's a somewhat recurring fan theory uh that leon is an alcoholic um which isn't like fun or cool or anything but i think it's actually like pretty specific i guess and worth um worth knowing or, or I don't know. It, it it informs a lot about his character, and I think that like, it, if it was gone about in a responsible way and was sort of like written properly or written well, that would be a, um, I think kind of a cool thing. And like the fact that there's consequences, so to speak, for his alcoholism in canon um, is. I think potentially kind of interesting. Uh, are you dead? Not so much. Yeah, and there goes my knife. Okay, I was trying to kill her with it. For the sake of it, in this game, um... Enemies don't have reliable uh, enemies don't have reliable volumes of health. I think this is a locked door. Yeah, we need the the bolt cutters. Um, enemies don't have set amounts of health. Oh dang! 
listing off the survivors on the chalkboard. And then a map of some kind. Can't actually read what that what that says in the, the scribbled chalk. Um, hmm. I'll, I'll talk about the RNG health mechanics in, in just a moment. So just to finish up the anecdote about Leon. Um, the, the characters in Resident Evil aren't enormously well elaborated upon. Not all the time, at least. Um, a lot of the time, they have kind of limited characterization. Um, or rather, the characterization is like... Is that that guy outside who I hear? He uses a gunpowder. Handgun ammo, gunpowder times two. Shotgun shells, gunpowder, plus high-grade gunpowder, yellow. Mag ammo, high-grade gunpowder, yellow, times two. There's not a lot of ammo left around the station, so make good use of any gunpowder you find. Different guns require different ammo, so pay attention to when you're combining things or you won't get what you need. Speaking of which, gunpowder. I think, is there a guy in here? I think he gets up. No. Nope. Operation report. September 28th, 2.30 AM. It's just, it's down to just me and three others. No weapons, no ammo, and too many skirmishes. Have drained us mentally and physically. We're not gonna make it. Officer Phillips once suggested we escape through the sewers. Apparently, there's a secret tunnel under this place left over from its museum days. I brushed her idea off before, but now it's not sounding all that bad. Yeah, there's no proof there's even a tunnel or even that the sewers aren't infested with zombies, but I don't want to sit here and wait to die either. It's a long shot, but I'm going to try to find out what I can about that tunnel. Elliot Edward. Rookie's first assignment. Leon S. Kennedy, we're putting you on a very special case for your assignment. Your mission is to unlock your desk. The key to your success is in the initials of our first names. Input the letters in the order of our desks. There are two locks, one on each side of the desk. Make sure you get them both. Basically, your first task is to remember that your fellow officer's names, but you figure that out much uh, that much out right. Good luck, Leon. By the way, it might take a little work to get Scott to give you a straight answer. From Lieutenant Branagh. Scrawled in a corner between drops of blood. Be glad you're not here, rookie. So, um, Leon as alcoholic is, uh, briefly sort of fleshed out in, um, in two of the CGI films, potentially. The, the, okay, so, so the one I should say that, uh, most plainly addresses it, so we have D, we have E, I think it's, let's see, it's something E and D. We can brute force it. There we go. Where is zombie? Oh, there he is. Then on this side we have... R, presumably S, and one other. I think it might be ERS. Oh, no, that's not even an op option. Let's try MRS. Oh, no, that's not even an option. Uh, no, hmm. Marvin Rita. So it's got to be MRS. 
M R not an option, MRG. There we go. Scott, I guess wasn't one of them actually. High capacity mag for Matilda. Combine. Thank you. So I now don't have to reload as often. Anything on this side? Not so much. That guy's still alive, I'm sure. Oh, need the spade key. Okay, what side are you gonna be on, big guy? I'm just going to get to the safe room that I know is here from having watched this game. Uh, and in fact, hello, and board it up. Into the safe room we go. We're safe, everybody. Playing this late at night does make me slightly more nervous. Uh, yeah, let's get some more ammo real quick. And let's, oh, don't really want to examine. I want to combine, combine. How many can we stack? Okay, we can stack all 42. That's great. Uh, but yeah, in, in Resident Evil Vendetta, which was the third of the CGI films, Leon is like heavily drinking. Um, and it's pretty unambiguous that he's like finishing up like a bottle of whiskey, like before noon, um, in, in one particular scene. Um, and then in the second one, which is called Damnation, it seems to be implied that he's drunk for most of the events of that film. And he's like constantly drinking uh drinking from a flask and there's one particular line i believe where he says something there's something weird about how he phrases it and he implies that like he intends to drink multiple drinks not just one um when meeting up with somebody later something like that medicinal ben medicinal benefit of herbs Humans have used herbs to treat sickness and disease since the dawn of time. In this book, we will explore three such herbs native to the Arklay Mountains. Green herbs have the ability to heal basic injuries, while blue herbs have long been used to treat poisoning. As for red herbs, they are visually appealing. They offer, oh, while they are visually appealing, they offer no med medicinal benefits. Or so it was thought until recently. It's well known that combining herbs together produces blends that heighten the herbs' effects. But it has been discovered that red herbs can play a big role when mixed properly. According to one doctor of Asian medicine, mixing blue and red herbs together produces a blend that will strengthen one's constitution. Truly, we have only begun to realize the full potential of these herbs and their ability to heal the human body. Further research is sure to yield even more fascinating results. Yeah, so um, yeah, in this game you can combine green red for a complete full heal, heal green blue for heal and poison. Um, but yeah, they actually give a utility to blue red, which is kind of nice, which is that it's a huge damage or a huge um defensive buff like damage reduction i guess but anyway um yeah i, I don't know like I, I don't necessarily want leon to be an alcoholic so to speak like that's obviously not a, a thing um you know that's like i i don't want to be cruel or anything uh green red Cool. Film contains evidence. Do not leave out. Oh, and we can develop a photo here if we if we have one, or if we get a photo roll, presumably. And we can turn the lights on. Nice and comfy in here. We get safer music. How pleasant. So the RNG health that I mentioned earlier, um, did I even finish up my last point? Man, I really shouldn't play when I'm tired. Um, my last point, I guess, was that the, the, the fact that Leon 
in the original version of the game was late because he was um, drinking to cope already with something like pre-zombie. He, he was drinking uh, because his girlfriend broke up with him, I believe. Um, I, I, I always thought that, that was like... Um, like a, a, an interesting thing that connected the dots between this element that had been introduced in later canon with this element from like very very early canon um oh, I should also check the map real quick so there is a safety deposit room I can't get into the records room yet. That is um, locked on both sides, I believe. Um, safety deposit room, I think we can hypothetically get into right now, but um, until we get a particular key item, it, it doesn't necessarily make sense for us to do that. You're probably alive. You're definitely alive. Uh, another herb. Anything down here? Let's see if that guy... Yeah, perfect. Off the stairway, so I don't have to deal with him there. Um... What I was mentioning before was that, uh, yeah, health is semi-RNG in this game. So something that I believe all of the mainline Resident Evil games have done since uh, Resident Evil 4. I think this is the one that's DCM. No? No? Oh, no, this is CAP. I I mentioned for whatever reason I've remembered these from other people's playthroughs, which, like, will find the evidence. Oh, man, I don't even really want these. That's inventory space being taken up. Um, oh, well. We have gotten them anyway, so. That's fine. Portable safe instructions. Press a button to light up its corresponding lamp. Light them all up to open the safe. The buttons must be pressed in a certain order. Pressing a single button out of order will cause all of the lights to go out, and you will need to start the sequence over again. Okay. Uh, tab. Yep, I know how to examine items. Uh, all of the Resident Evil games since no 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 oh, well I can do I'm, I apologize, I'm usually better at these kinds of things. Uh, ba, 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 ba. There we go. Sorry. Um, <laughs> I should have gotten that like on my second or third try, not the fifth or whatever that was. Um, oh, that's the key actually for the, the room downstairs. Um, we can't get through here until we get a... Like a... Uh, wheel to turn that with. Um, you can't be dead, right? Yeah, I didn't think so. Jesus. So since Resident Evil 4, they've had this dynamic game difficulty, which is a little bit hard to explain, um, but like basically at all times the game is At all times, the game is, is like, monitoring. Oh, hello. What the hell? Oh, 
The game is uh, monitoring your progress. Okay, I'm gonna run past him real quick. I'll get back to him. Dang it. Okay. So what we want to do right now is put this on, I think on two is the better bet. And then, uh, can I use my mouse to do this? No. Cool. I can just actually check what I need to do. Uh, I can't do 203 yet. I can probably do 208. 109, 106, 102, I already got. Okay, so 106. The fact that I can't do that with the mouse is kind of annoying. And that's film. 108. No, I thought that was one of them. 108. Nine. That's certainly good. I'll double check. What do I need? You I don't want to grab right now. You I can't grab. You are good. You can I stack? Yes. Good. This I need a key card for to get the shotgun. 208, I can, I can open. Okay, well, zombie on the way in. Hey, buddy. So yeah, this uh, difficulty director. Oh, first miss of the game, maybe. Oh, second miss of the game. I'm sure I will miss many more. Son of a bitch. Now are you dead? I think so. Now I need he made me forget. 208. Two oh eight. The game doesn't let you know. But at all times, it's keeping a numeric value uh, stored. And the there's all these different systems in the game that are uh, feeding into what causes that number to either go up or down. Storage locker, terminal memo. It appears that the keypad, uh, <laughs> you know who you are, bastard. Who else fuck up this badly? Find some spare keys. Um, the fact that you can't just press the the little nub is a little bit silly, but whatever. Um, I'm going to take this to the film lab real quick. I can drop some stuff off because I, I can't do anything with the shotgun ammo anyway. Uh, drop you off, drop you off. I might even drop that off. Um... Turn the lights off. Develop the film. Commemorative photo. So the book and the scepter go in the hands of this guy. Cool. So that's now just a, a document. Um, might as well save. We made some good progress there without taking any damage. But the so this number that's going up and down is influenced by all of these things. I, I guess it's not enormously well documented. Um, But, let's see, uh, the biggest thing that causes the number to go down is a death. Uh, so when you die, that number, like, plummets, um, pretty, pretty significantly. 
by percentage. Oh, thank you. And then that's a nice little little fake out. So we have, uh oh, is there a guy around the corner? Nope, it's a little artist maquette. Uh, is this DCM then? Yeah. The fact that I remember those from other people's playthroughs is completely ridiculous. I, uh, oh, mag ammo. Uh, I will not be able to use that for a long time. I, I have like blood relations who I've met many dozens of times in my life who I have a harder time remembering their names than I do like lockers from a game I've never played. Locker combinations. Um, <laughs> that's kind of embarrassing to be honest. Oh, spade key. Perfect. That's what I want. Um, we have a lot going on up here. Should I go back down and use the spade key on some stuff is the question. So I can use the spade key To connect the west office back to the main hall but we will get out of we can also re-enter that from the main hall um spook coming up we got a dude he's gonna crawl past the window any moment just to spook us what in the that's a liquor people who know this game will know what a liquor is they're really spooky. They're part of why I don't run through every environment in this game. I know we won't have them this soon, but I'm trying to get sort of used to the uh, the rhythm of walking rather than running. Uh, also, this this little vase lock picks would be hidden in those in Resident Evil 7. It's a funny little model to reuse. Uh, I don't think that's where I want to be right now. What else is up here? Oh, it's just this west storage room. For whatever reason, I thought there was more on the second or more on the third floor. I think there might be a zombie in here. Can't remember. Uh, more boards is good. Gunpowder. I don't know if I really want to take right now, but we're on our way down. Requisite creepy clown puppet. Classic to horror games. The number goes up. The number that the this in-game director is sort of monitoring. Oh, that one spooked me. Um, there's this in-game director keeping track of the number. It goes up when you kill enemies. It goes up when you have health items, I believe. Uh, um... It goes up when you're really well stocked on ammo. C4. We need a detonator to blow that up. Speaking of which, some guy's scribblings. Damn those corporate assholes. They cut me off after all I've done for them. But it's, if that's how it's going to be, so be it. I'm going to have a little fun of my own as the world goes to shit. I boarded up all those filthy pigs in a steel pen and set some Steve C4. All I gotta do is detonate it, and it's sayonara, suckers. But it's no fun if it's over too soon, so maybe I'll give that one raving loon something to really squeal about. Yeah, maybe I'll give him a little toy and tell him to kill the guy next to you, and I'll spare the others. I wonder what he'll do. You yell about justice and pride, but how many times did you go against me, your, su your own superior? Yeah, you're such a good cop, so good you had to die. Man, is this fun. I need some music for this. Pretty, pretty standard police stuff. Neat. Two extra slots for our uh, inventory. Okay, so we need a, a detonator to make that work. And we need that because that's our third medallion in there. This is kind of, I, I presume this is formerly the, the museum's art storage lockup. Do you fall zombie. I think you'll fall if I... Okay. Okie doke. So we're in the library. It's Marvin. I need you back here ASAP. Are you okay, Marvin? I 
I've got something to show you. It's important. Copy that. I'll be right there. Hmm. Super nice painting of, of justice there. This was suitable for this police station. Gorgeous library, too. Um, so we can't get across there. Sort of the... Um, the trap that the game wants you to sort of fall into that I'm probably just not going to do because it's weird and glitchy or can be glitchy is that if you walk through that, that's a weak section of floor and you'll fall through. Um, so I'm not going to do that. Uh, I should also check. Is that... Oh, I guess I can't see it. Is this open? Yes, it is. Through the door I go. Lion. Uh, cool. Let's check the document. Um, man, I keep get dis getting distracted from the number story. I apologize. Um, that's not what I want. I want officer's notebook. Lion statue. England. No, this is the unicorn statue. Um, uh, Pisces, Scorpio. Can't tell what that third one is, but we'll, we'll figure it out when we get there. We could brute force it again. Uh, Pisces. Maybe that's Gemini because they're two mirrored fish. I don't think so though. Uh, Scorpio. I think this was that. Yeah. Perfect. Hello, unicorn. Scotland. My beloved Scotland. Oh. And a map for the upper floors. Perfect. Can I go through here? No, that's locked from the other side. What are you? Oh, more gunpowder. Uh, I'll hold off on that for a minute. Let's see if we can get through here unscathed. Uh, what are you? Red book. I don't have space in my inventory for. Uh, use. Thank you. And out I go. So that guy next to the door got up. I don't think they wander into the main hall, so I shouldn't be too worried, but what's up, Marvin? There you are. Come here. Take a look. Yes. I knew she'd make it. Oh, you know her? Yeah. Name's Claire. I came into town with her. You can get to that courtyard. The second floor, east side. <laughs> I'm on it. Thanks, Lieutenant. Okie doke. Real quick. Put that in. That's good. I'm going to put away the gunpowder. I might run back up to the library real quick just to grab the book so I don't forget about it. Because uh, we're going to be wrapping up sessions pretty soon. <sighs> Do I keep the boards? I certainly don't need the mag ammo. I'll keep the boards for now. You are the... The West Office. It's the one where my desk was. Oh, funny little thing, by the way. You can see that there's a gap there, and there's a there's an extra L somewhere in this office. Hey, buddy. There's an extra L somewhere in this office because in the uh, original Japanese version of the game from uh, 1998, they uh, they screwed up and spelled "welcome" with two L's, which sort of makes sense. The word "well" on its own usually has two L's. Um, out. But, uh, they, they, they had a call back to that implying that somebody, somebody on staff uh, canonically within the police station wasn't great at spelling. Uh, also very normal police stuff, I guess. Um, and they, uh, they have the extra letter as proof of that and, like, weird spacing as proof of that. 
So we just saved. Um, I'm probably going to wrap up this session here. Uh, I've been having trouble keeping my thoughts straight because I'm tired. I said uh, I apologize for that. But um, okay, so finishing up the story about the the AI director. Four was the first game that had it, and I think all of the mainline games have had it since. Number stored in the game. Uh, the better you do in the game, killing enemies, having lots of health items, having lots of ammo, having a high accuracy rating, um, etc. Uh, that number keeps going up. When you die, when you're low on items at certain checkpoints, when you're low on ammo at certain checkpoints, etc. Um, taking damage as well is part of it, um, and so on. The, the number goes down. Uh, as I understand it, that number is used as like a um, is used as like a seed that's fed into a random number generator um, that alters aspects of the game difficulty. Uh, so, enemy health is always RNG, and depending on how well you're doing in the game, um, it will actually the 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 rng enemy health that rng stands for random number generator so like the the enemy's health is randomly selected from a certain pool that pool is weighted slightly in the rng uh depending on how well you're doing if you're doing really well the number goes up if you're doing really poorly the number goes down um i, I don't know what the exact relative ranges are but it might be the kind of thing where it's like baseline normal difficulty uh, enemy health might normally range like 400 to 600 whatever that means uh, if you're doing really really well though it might actually range from like 500 to 700 or maybe even uh, may maybe even higher maybe it's always 600 to 800 uh, if you're doing really poorly though enemy health will go down um, I don't know. D different games implement it differently, but as I understand it, some of the some of the games will also have things where it's like random drops, like whether or not en enemies drop ammo is uh, is RNG influenced. Um, like it's not always set per enemy, and how much ammo they drop, and e even the set drops in the world maybe. Like, oh, it'll it'll always be ammo at a certain location, like if you pick it up off the counter or something. Like, there will always be ammo there, but depending on how well you're doing or how poorly you're doing, um, whether it's four bullets, six bullets, or eight bullets might be different. Um, so the game is constantly adjusting itself. There's also these things where it's like, we have never so far gotten a headshot crit in the game. Uh, there's a specific animation where you can split a zombie's head open when you shoot them. Um, we have not had that happen yet because until that one zombie in the equipment room, we have maintained 100% accuracy. Not only have we maintained 100% accuracy, I believe, but um, I believe that it's been 100% headshots, too. Uh, we have died once, which probably brought the number down slightly. Um, but we have not taken very much damage. We haven't been wasting ammo. We're actually... We're pretty high up on ammo, and like we have the ability to make more with gunpowder. Um, we're, we're moving at a good clip. So um, the, the game is probably going to start... It is going to, on its own, skew slightly harder uh, as a result of how well I'm playing. Um, and similarly, if I start doing poorly, the game will get easier. It's actually kind of a funny thing. Uh, if you ever watch speedrunners of some of these games, they will sometimes deliberately just like empty clips of ammo shooting into the ground. And the reason that they do that is to... Um, not only reduce the amount of ammo they have in their inventory, which alters the RNG, but uh, it also reduces their accuracy rating, which, again, also influences the RNG. Um, this is pretty important to how they, they do their runs, uh, in particular because uh, another thing that's influenced by this number isn't just enemy health, 
um, and critical rates, but also enemy behavior. Uh, so enemy aggression levels, like how prone they are to lunge at you is also influenced, as I understand it, by, by these numbers. Um, so it's like deliberately doing badly for speedrunners makes the enemies more passive, which like makes for a better speed run. Um, with the exception of like, if you're playing on professional difficulty in that game or potentially in this game, I know with Resident Evil 4, professional, the only difference between professional and normal is that professional, the number can't go down. It can't go up either. The number is just set at max. So like, hypothetically, if you're playing extremely well on normal in Resident Evil 4, I believe you can functionally get the game into a state that is uh, nearly indistinguishable from playing on hard difficulty. Um, I don't think that's the case for this one, but again, I, I haven't really ever seen super extensive documentation of the system. Um, So I don't know. I, we'll, we'll, uh, I'll see if I can look into it in between sessions um, because I, I, I think it's always a, a really interesting thing. And a lot of people comment about how like when they're playing this game, it like, oh, it feels perfect that like you always are, are feeling a little bit low on ammo. You're always feeling a little bit low on health items. Um, everything is perfect. And it's like, that's not just that the game is perfectly like, giving you the exact right amount um, as a preset, but rather... The game is actually giving you the amount that it thinks you need uh, based on if you're doing well or, or not doing well, which I, I think is super fascinating. I think it's super cool, really interesting game design that there's this like subtle invisible system that's like tailoring the game to always be a little bit difficult. Um, I'll look into those details because I've heard things over the years about how the system works that I, I don't know how much of it is true. Um, and I, I would like to look into it more. Like one, one that I've heard that I, I want to mention in advance of looking it up, because I, I think one of the ones that's the most interesting is that allegedly um, the, the last bullet in your magazine before reloading. So like if I were to shoot this down, goes 23, 22, 21, whatever. Um, the very last bullet, when we're down to one, um, allegedly has a way higher crit chance. Um, and that's like part of the system where it's like when you're desperately low on ammo, um, where like as your ammo dwindles, your crit chance increases. So like the likelihood that you're gonna split the enemy's head open and they just fall over dead permanently goes up. So um, I, I don't know if that's true, but if that is true, that's like a, a really cool game design thing. Because um, it leads to these like desperate cinematic moments where it's like when you're on your last bullet, suddenly you, you get this like lucky break, so to speak, of your last bullet decapitated the zombie. Um, but it's not luck. It's, it's the game making you think you're experiencing luck experiencing luck which I, I think is fascinating so anyway uh, uh this has been session two i think we made good progress we um we got through most of a wing of a building uh at least as thoroughly as we could maybe more thoroughly than we should have because i remember the cip dcm locker combinations uh, again I, i'm at some point in my life I, I could very well have like nieces and nephews whose names i struggle more to remember than random stuff in video games that I, I shouldn't remember but I don't know why certain things get burned into my brain and, but they just do uh, even in games I haven't played um, I swear I, I'm not looking at a guide on my phone or anything like I genuinely just remembered I, I just remember those codes <laughs> and I, I probably always will which is really stupid but i know things as well like again like i'm not looking at a guide but like the the happy birthday puzzle in resident evil 7 um when you have to input the code loser on that one thing um every one is exactly five down 
I, I, I think it's exactly five down. So like all of them are the exact same motions. Like they're not at different places in the sequence. Like you can just blindly do it. They're all the same rotation. I think it's five, but like the fact that I remember that they're all in the same number of rotations is a weird thing that is probably going to stick with me. And I'm sure with video games, everybody has these kinds of things. Um, I'm maybe an unusual case where I remember it even for games I haven't played, but who knows? Uh, thanks everyone for watching. I, uh, I got so eager to play this again that I have not uploaded the first video yet. So if you are commenting at all on Alice in Wonderland symbolism, uh, or through the looking glass symbolism, I have not yet seen it. Uh, I am going to try to be doing these uploads a little bit more during the series, but I'll, I'll address that at the start of next episode too. So thanks so much everyone uh, for watching. I, I hope you're having fun uh, with a, a slightly more chill playthrough. Again, I'm not a pro, but I'm not screaming either. So that, that might be enjoyable for some people. So thanks so much for watching. Uh, we'll see you in session three.